Hi, my name is Ovidia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, thanks to my friend Robert, I would like to teach you and give you tips on how to play Cascadia. Designed by Randy Flynn and published by Flat Out Games and AEG. What I love about Cascadia is how different it is every time you play. No two games are ever the same. It's like cracking a new puzzle every time. It's also super cute and very easy to learn. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. It helps a lot. In Cascadia, a region of the Pacific Northwest, you compete with other players to create the most diverse environment as you draft habitat tiles and wildlife tokens to construct a beautiful landscape mosaic. When all players have completed 20 turns, they compare their Cascadia to see who has built the largest contiguous habitat corridors in best harmony with the wildlife they populate. The player with the most points wins the game. Let's set up the game, starting by giving randomly to each player one of these starter tile habitats. Here you go, Peter. You have rivers, mountains, forests, prairies, and wetlands habitats. On these, you can place wildlife tokens for grizzly bears, Roosevelt elks, salmon, red-tailed hawks, and red foxes. Shuffle the tiles and place them face down for easy access. Take 20 per player plus three. So in this three player game, I use 63 and return the others to the box. Place all of the wildlife tokens in the cloth bag for now. This tile with a pine cone and an arrow is called a keystone tile. I'll explain later how you can use it to gain nature tokens. For now, place them close by. The rest of the setup is the same, no matter if it's one or four players. Draw four habitat tiles face up in the middle of the table, and then take four wildlife tokens from the bag and place them in front of each tile so they form four pairs. Then randomly select one wildlife scoring card for each of the five wildlife then keep them within easy view of all players. These are end of game objectives you need to meet to make more points. Bear score depending on the groups you manage to build. The number of bears is what matters, not the shape of the group. Groups cannot touch each other. So for instance here, all individual groups of three bears will score 10 points. Elks also score in groups, but most of the time the shape matters, except this one. For those, they must be in a straight line. Here, in those formations, and here in a ring. In this one, you score for the size of the connected herd, like 18 points if you connect six elks. Salmon also score in lines or runs, and those runs cannot touch other salmon. For instance here, a line of six or seven salmon would score 20 or 25 points respectively. Hawks are a bit different. This one scores when it's on its own, and these three when they have a line of sight. It means they must be in a straight line from flat side to flat side, like this or like that. They all have a slightly different objective clearly explained here. Finally, we have the foxes who score based on the animals surrounding each fox or pairs of foxes. Here, your foxes will score points for each pair of foxes surrounded by different pairs of animals. Once you've played a few games, you can use the family variant card or some specific sets of cards for the scenarios. Now that we have our five cards, all the components are set, we're ready to start playing. The player who has last seen one of these five animals will start the game, or you can pick randomly. I usually draw from the animal tokens shown on each player's keystone tile. So in this case, it will be the hawk who starts. So now that player has to pick a pair of habitat and animal in their turn. At the beginning, you can only pick one of the four pairs available to you. You have to place it next to at least one edge of an existing habitat. Here, here or here, but not there, or on top here. You make more points if the habitats connect, but you do not actually have to match the habitats when placing a new one. But ideally, if you can, try to grow two of your habitat corridors at once. You can never move it again, so choose carefully where you're placing it. Now, when you pick your habitat tile, also consider the wildlife token you are picking with it. In most cases, you will place the wildlife token on one of your habitats, it has to be an empty habitat, which matches that animal type. Also, you don't have to place it on the habitat you've just placed. So you can place this one here, here, or here, but not there. Note that unlike the habitat tile that you have to place, the wildlife token is a choice. You can decide to put it back in the bag. It's not great, but sometimes you don't have a place to use it or you just don't want to use it. 
Now refill the empty habitat and wildlife slots without moving the existing tiles and tokens. Don't forget to pick up a nature token if you've placed the animal on a keystone tile. You don't use the nature token immediately, but it will give you more flexibility in the coming turns. You can use the nature token to change all or some of the wildlife tokens. If you do, place those you've discarded aside and pick new tokens one by one from the bag. Then return those you just discarded back in the supply bag. A nature token also lets you pick a wildlife token that is not in the same pair combination as the habitat tile. There are also times in the game when you can replace wildlife tokens without using a nature token. If three of the four tokens are the same animal, once per turn you can replace them if you want. If all four tokens are the same animal, you have no choice. As the area is overpopulated, you must replace all four of them, no matter how many times it happens. Again, remember to draw new tokens before putting the ones you've just discarded back in the bag. And that's the end of the turn. The player on your left will play next. The game goes on and on until there's only three tiles left. All the players should have played 20 turns and then it's time to count the points. There are four sources for points, wildlife tokens, contiguous habitats, bonus points for largest habitats, and nature tokens. In this example, the player has two sets of bears, so that's 20 points. And for the elks, the player has two starts of a ring, so that would be 10 points. For the salmon, it has a run of five, so that would be 17 points. Now the hawks is beautiful what this player has done, because you've got here three different animals, three different animals, and two here for a total of 25 points. And for the foxes, there's one pair, so that's five points for a total of 77. Pretty good. Let's have a look at how we score with the habitats. Here we look at the longest contiguous corridors of habitats, starting with the mountains. In this case, he has four, but another player has the largest territory with five. So that player would get three extra bonus points. The second largest would get one point extra. Then we go to the forest. In this instance, the player has three. So this player ties for second largest with another player. So none of them get any points. And now we look at the prairies. This player has seven tiles together. So that's seven. He ties with another player for the largest, so they'll split the points with two points each. For the wetlands, this player has a quarter of six. That puts him in second place with one point extra. Finally, for the rivers, he's the largest with six points, gets the three bonus points. We add all this up. None of them had pine cones, and the final score is 112 for this player, which is amazing. Check the rules for two-player games, as the score is slightly different for the first and second largest. The player with the most points wins the game. In case of a tie, it will be the player with the most nature tokens. And if they still tie, then they both win and they should play again. For more variety in your games, try the scenarios that combine with specific wildlife scoring cards that track your achievements, as you can see explained at the end of the rulebook. Now my tips to win at Cascadia are try in the early turns to get some of the nature tokens. Try to keep some nature tokens to get out of a tough spot. Uh, don't hoard them because they only give one point, so it's not really worth it. Try as much as you can to keep your habitats separated so you can make more points at the end of the game. Sometimes it's not easy, but try to avoid competing for the same resources, although sometimes you can't help it. Foxes don't usually give a lot of points as a primary objective, but they can be a nice filler towards the end of the game. So that's how you play Cascadia. It's such a great game. You'll probably want to play another game once you're done and another one after that. It's got great replayability and it doesn't last very long. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. And if there's a game you'd like me to teach, leave it in the comments. I'll definitely check it out. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is right here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.